Hello and welcome to Tech 18. I'm Muhammad Adnan and in this video series we are back again with interview questions and answers. This time we are taking into advanced level of Power BI questions and moving towards Microsoft Fabric. So in future you will see a lot more questions towards Microsoft Fabric. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel or if you are new to this channel just click on the subscribe button because almost 90% of my viewers are not my subscribers. That's not a good sign, but I highly request you to click on the subscribe button and also like and share this video with others so that they can also learn something from this video series and from my channel and get ahead in their career. So this can be a kind of good date for you. Please take care of that. Can we have a multiple add to relationships in Power BI? This is also some of the people's all shall we get confused about that. Sometimes they said yes, but in reality, it's actually no. We cannot able to create multiple add to relationships in Power BI, but we can create multiple relationships. It can be only one can be active at one time and the others can be inactive at the same time. Now for this one, I actually asked a follow up question is if we cannot able to create multiple add to relationship, then what if I want to get the data of the inactive relationship? Like for example, you have a connection between the sales table with this order date table, which is order date and shipment date. I want to get the data from both the tables, sales date and also the shipment date at the same time. So in that case, what we can use, we can use this use relationship DAX function, where it actually helps for this particular calculation to from inactive to activate that relationship and then give us the result here. That's really a cool feature. But if you compare with other different tools, what we have in the market, they actually support multiple active relationships here. But in Power BI, it is not yet so far, but maybe it will come in future. But the purpose behind this is a different scenario. So for now, it fulfills that we can use this use relationship DAX function and then we can utilize that functionality. So the next thing here is what is the use of bookmark in Power BI? Ah, this is a simple step. So people can easily tell about this one, right? Exactly. This is a simple thing itself, but this is really an important thing here. So for example, if you want to give the proper answer for this, some of the people actually talks about the page navigation itself. But even though Power BI has way long added this functionality about the page navigation, but people, they are not upgrading themselves. They are still using the old methodology here. So basically the bookmark is actually to capture the state of the current snapshot. So whatever you want here, if you want to reset the entire filters, that's the default publish option. You can use that option here. If you want to specifically give the predefined filters for the user, if just click on button, it can filter all the other parameters here. They don't need to click on some multiple filters. In that case, also this can be helpful. So this kind of some kind of predefined things and this can be helpful to reset the parameters. So some of the use cases of bookmarks you can use in Power BI. And this is really helpful. And I made a separate video about that. What are this positive or negatives? I mean, how difficult it is to do these bookmarks in my multiple videos, I will also try to add that in the video description. Please check out those videos as well. And what is the use of field parameters in Power BI? This is really many people have actually given the wrong answer. So they actually think about the regular parameters options in Power BI, which we have it in Power Query. So they can, they are saying that we can change the data sources for these things. But in reality, the field parameter is entirely different thing. This is really an amazing feature where we can use the measure as a kind of filters, as a kind of legend, as a kind of X axis for multiple scenarios. So here I made a separate videos on that as well. I recommend highly to go and check out that video if you haven't tried field parameters so far. So this is basically if you want to dynamically change the X axis of a measure, like X axis of a visual, like you want to show this trend analysis or the category by category, by subcategory, by region, all these things you can directly change within one single visual here with the help of this field parameter. And also there are some of the other cool features available. I will also add that video here in the description. You just check out those videos as well. So ultimately it enables you dynamically switch between the measures and the columns within the same visual. You don't need to create multiple measures. You don't need to create multiple bookmarks here. With the help of this one, you can able to create all those things here. So you can users can toggle between the sales and profit using the same chart itself. So the next thing is what is the deployment pipeline in Power BI? So many people aren't aware of this one. I totally agree with them because it depends on project to project. 
like some of them they are only restricted to power bi desktop level so they haven't any exposure to power bi service that's totally fine i agree on that but at least i request some kind of honest reply from the user if you haven't tried that you just try, say them that you haven't worked on these things if you have a theory knowledge then you can explain them this is theory knowledge but i haven't worked on the practical knowledge so that at least gives them the justification that you are giving the clarity about what you know and what you don't know here don't try to say that you know everything right i have seen many people that they actually try to say everything whether it is a positive or negative just it's kind of saying from the school days like don't leave any questions just answer any of them right whatever you want so that doesn't help in my scenario if i am the judge i am the person who is taking the interview i don't think that's a useful scenario you only commit you only answer the question which you are aware of that if you are not prepared well i request you to prepare well and then come for the interview here and yeah that's what the thing the other thing is here that i don't want to disclose it now but i will try to disclose some other videos here so what is deployment pipeline in power bi this can be helpful scenario in the kind of version management to be say or in the kind of application life cycle management this is comes from the regular software development life cycle where the development environment testing environment and production environment it will be there so that kind of situation is actually applicable here like if you are developing application you can just try it out on the development environment it can be three different workspaces so developer can publish into development workspace and from there they can move into quality with a different data sources and that small group of people the specific business people can test those reports and then once they validate those information then we can live into the production here so that vast majority of the people can share and view the report here that's the sequence of process the one more advantage here is if you are getting any kind of request from the business and if you don't have this kind of life cycle management then you directly publish into power bi in the production environment and unfortunately if something goes wrong then everything will collapse then that's the reason you have to have three different layers here some company they only maintain one or two layers like they can have test and development in one single thing and directly into production so it really depends on your company to company you can also use that another thing here useful is as you are working with a large volume of the data you have some limitations in power bi desktop so you cannot go more than 1 gb of the data it can have impact on the performance and all those stuff so for development phase you can just work on small quantity of the data and for testing one they can publish into power bi service they can refresh over there and the people business people can just replicate the production data into testing environment and then they can test out those features and finally once they are approved they can load into production with the real data here so this has the advantage of using deployment pipeline in power bi service thanks for watching this till the end if you haven't subscribed or like this video i request you to like this video subscribe to my channel and share this video with others so that they can also get something new or learn or fresher the knowledge from here so until then see you in the next video